Post. Dalio is now saying the risks of recession are rising, while Bridgewater's co-CIO Bob Prince says there's probably a much bigger shakeout to come, bigger than last week. So what was last week really all about? And if we see the same issues start to line up again, will we see it? It's been a tumultuous market ride. You can see the point moves yesterday. What you don't see here are the minuses and the pluses. Friday was a plus. Monday was a minus. <laughs> to the floor show and our traders at the New York Stock Exchange of the CME Group, along with Mark Hamrick of Bankrate.com. He's the senior economist. Guys, we know it probably wasn't just one thing. That would be too simple. So I'll give you two. But I'll start with you, John Corpino. What have you identified as the culprits for last week's moves? All right, so two things I've looked at. One is you cannot have one-way markets, right? Our market went up straight, 25% over 14 months. At some point, it was going to break. We all enjoyed it on the way up. We have to be strong enough to take a little bit of pain on the way down. The other thing uh, that I looked at is what you just said. There was not one real catalyst that caused this market turn. I think that is somewhat concerning, right? We've had so many different topics come up, whether it's interest rates, uh, North Korea, closing of the government. We've got all these different things, but there wasn't that one thing that turned the market. So when the market turns, everyone starts to th think, well, what is it? What is out there? What don't we know? The fear of not knowing something added to this market. We saw a lot of momentum. We saw players on the sidelines jump in. We saw program training pick up activity there. The, the good saving grace is the people waited for that 5% pullback to jump into the market. We saw it last week. We're clearly seeing it today, too. Okay, but you said people panicking. Chris, people or algos, these algorithm trades, these computer program trades? Yeah, I mean, well, the algorithms, are they're, they're programmed by people. So when you get a, a lack of liquidity, which is what we had during that last week, when you have the market moving 4 5 6% at a crack, the liquidity dries up. Everybody puts their hands back and wants to wait. Everybody that said they were going to buy the 10% dip, they're like, well, maybe it's going to be 15 or 20 And with electronic trading, that gets exacerbated. That's really a, a, the bottom line. So that's, that's the part and parcel. It's, it's nice to have electronic trading because you can get stuff done. But when liquidity goes away... You get these big moves. So from top to bottom, from top to bottom, the S&P broke 12%. Maybe that's our trading range for the next three or four months. And I would not uh, be surprised to see 100, 200, 300 point moves every day in the Dow so we figure out where we're going. It's huh. nice. The S&P has got a double bottom. And a lot of people are looking at that. They're trying to call the bottom. We'll see. If we go back and test that bottom, you could run into the same issue again where everybody says, okay. wait a minute, I'm out. So... You're right about